Moira, Angela, darling. Wendy, Moira, Angela, darling. Wendy, Moira, Angela, darling. This seemingly inane repetition of a long name is a call-out to the original movie where Peter Pan chauvinistically caught Wendy off as she said her name. Well, get on with it, girl. Uh, my name is Wendy. Uh, Wendy Mora Angela Dodd. Wendy's enough. Oh. Hi, I'm George Mordecai Tiberius Perry, and in this video, I will put in my two cents about Disney's Peter Pan movies. As far as remakes go, Peter Pan and Wendy fall somewhere in the middle with respect to deviation from the original, since they really wanted to fix the problems with the first one. Reviewers were not impressed. One of my concerns with Peter Pan and Wendy is that it highlights Disney's hypocrisy, which has been obvious for years. Let me bring up a seemingly unrelated example. The cancellation of the Owl House. This lively, beautiful show was rejected because apparently does not fit Disney's so-called brand and seems to be geared toward older viewers. But what the heck is Disney's brand? We used to know. Now, Disney's hunger for a monopoly has diluted their brand until they're just some hodgepodge streaming service. They've got movies like Isle of Dogs, which is a masterpiece but does not live and breathe Disney. If anything, it lives and breathes. Ick. Mergers aside, Disney's own content feels off-brand to me, like Peter Pan and Wendy. This isn't a children's movie. It's an unpleasant psychological thriller written for disillusioned 30-something-year-olds. You know what really hurts about getting old? It's not... The creaking bones, or the dashed dreams, or even the sense of death drawing ever nearer. I have a query about all three Peter Pan movies. Why is Neverland so boring? This new one is just bleak, and these kids seem to be scraping by on the edge of survival. But even the old one is odd. If the point of the island's existence is to be an escape from the drudgery of adulthood, why does it have mermaids, whom we've never seen interact with the Lost Boys? Yeah, fine. Disney in the 50s was weird. But when I first saw ads for the new movie, I hoped we'd get some answers about the origins of Neverland. Instead, they just heaped mystery upon mystery, preferring to dwell on Hook's psyche for a long time, but then don't provide a satisfying resolution for him. And then, why do Native Americans live here? Is Tiger Lily magic and immortal? What power does the island have to keep kids from growing up? Where are the other pirates from? There's a lot of content I haven't read or watched that may have more info, but I'm only looking at Disney. I even forced myself to watch the 2008 Tinkerbell movie in the hopes it would answer these questions, which was painful, but it only created more queries. Returning to Neverland's boring composition, I expected something more from the new movie, something like the 2019 box office failure Wonder Park. It's a good meh plot, but the setting is actually made for kids. If one could combine the story from Peter Pan with the scenery and adventure from Wonder Park, that would be fun to watch. Otherwise, I sense a darker interpretation of Neverland's mundane nature beyond the simple staying kids forever thing. Especially in the new movie, it seems they just play make-believe in Neverland suggesting that you should escape real life to be able to use your imagination. But I don't truly believe that. Adults can play make-believe, too. You're playing D&D. <laughs> You're playing D&D. This whole apartment <laughs> is playing D&D. I, George Ferdinand Oscar Perry, had so little to say about Peter Pan and Wendy that my annoying assistant Sokpa did not even get a chance to interrupt. Stop biting me! Nom nom nom.